Do we got some Marvel fans out there? That's right, that's right. Welcome everyone to the all new, all different Marvel panel. We are so glad to have you all here with us today. Thank you for coming and standing in line and, and coming to hear about this, some great upcoming news that we've got. We've got an amazing panel of comic book editors, writers, artists. I, I don't know if we have any artists here today, but we have a bunch of writers here today. Uh, but we're all so excited to be with you here today. Let's, let's talk about who we've got. We've got Editor-in-Chief Axel Alonzo. <laughs> Editor Katie Kubert. We have writer Dennis Hopeless, who's writing all new X-Men and Spider-Woman. We got Jason Latour, who writes Spider-Gwen. We got Robbie Thompson, the writer of Silk and Venom Space Knight and Spidey. You may also know his work from Supernatural, where he's a writer. We got David Walker, writer of our upcoming Power Man and Iron Fist series. Yes. We got Tom Taylor, who writes all new Wolverine upcoming, and you wrote Iron Man for a great run. So Secret Wars is coming to an end, and after Secret Wars, we have, oh, and during Secret Wars, kind of, we have, <laughs> we have all new, all different Marvel. One of the books we are most excited about that's coming up is Black Panther by ta Coates and Brian Selfries. It's incredible. Axel, would you talk about how this book kind of came together and about the creative team? Sure. Well, this is, uh, we wanted to do Black Panther right, and I think, we, I think we're going to do it. <laughs> Long and short of it is that Tana, Tana Isi uh, interviewed uh, editor Sana Amanat at her TED Talk, and we had long known he was a big comic book fan, and we're, of course, well aware of his profile as a, as a, a singular writer on one of the most important issues of the day, race, writing about it in ways that no one else is right now. And uh, we just started a dialogue. And, uh, you know, we're just really fortunate here because uh, Ta-Nehisi brings a, a passion for Marvel Comics uh, and, and, and just a, a skill writing, a skill, a, a writing level that's just, you know, indescribable. His, his first arc is going to chronicle a revolution in Wakanda that is going to force T'Challa to figure out if being the same old Black Panther is going to save the day. And uh, I can't say much more without spoiling it, but it's going to reposition the Panther in the Marvel Universe in a major way. Uh, Panther is my favorite character dating back to when I was a boy. Uh, so I'm very excited about this. And Brian Stelfreeze is drawing it. We have some yeah. designs up here. Yeah, never before seen designs, I think. I don't think we've yeah. even shown these on the internet yet. First time you're seeing them here. Look at that T'Challa yeah. and Black Panther yeah. over there. It's just amazing. Yeah, Stelfree sent these over to us, and he was like, I want to make T'Challa blacker. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I wanted to be coal black. He's African. Is that okay? We're like, of course it's okay. Go, go, go. <laughs> so there you go. I think this is a book to be excited about. You know, it's not every day you get the type of worldwide coverage that you do, breaking in the New York Times the way it did. So very excited about this. We've been working on this for about a year. Oh, and, uh, and one thing, I see a great Spider-Gwen cosplayer out there. Can, you want to stand up? Yes. We'll be talking about Spider-Gwen later, but if you'd like to come, you can sit on the stage and you can read. I have next week's Spider-Gwen number one in my bag here. If you'd like to come up and do you want to read it? So this is Radioactive Spider-Gwen number one, our post-Secret Wars relaunch. So if you want, you can have a seat and read that, and you can keep that, absolutely. And we'll be doing that a little bit more as this panel goes along. I got some other cool surprises in this, in this bag of mine. All right, something else we want to talk about. Uh, coming out of Secret Wars, we're, all the X-Men books are changing. One of the main ones, the, the big daddy of the X-Men titles, Extraordinary X-Men. Super excited about this. Jeff Lemire, Umberto Ramos. Uh, they've got incredible plans coming up. Uh, Axel, you want to talk about this one too, or? Well, I'll start by saying, contrary to popular opinion, we are not canceling X-Men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just keep going for it, but it's not happening, okay? So long and short of it is that Extraordinary X-Men is the core X-Men book. It's being written by Jeff Lemire, amazing writer who's currently doing Hawkeye. This is his biggest book yet. 
Uh, he's working with the incomparable Humberto Ramos, who we stole from Spider-Man. Uh, this is the Core X book. It's an, a great eclectic team. Uh, it's got a mix of characters that include Storm, uh, Old Man Logan, and Young Jean Grey. What could possibly go wrong there? And, uh, <laughs> and let's just say that um, it, you're going to learn very early on that the, uh, let's just say, the mutant race uh, is, is imperiled by the existence of the Terrigen Mist, the very thing that is responsible for the creation and birth of new inhumans. So this is going to mean, uh, let's just say, uh, conflicting goals for mutants and humans in the future. Let's see where that takes them. Awesome. We've also got a new launch of all new Wolverine coming up. Yes, with X-23 putting on the Wolverine duds. Tom, Tom Taylor, you want to walk us through uh, your plans for all new Wolverine? Uh, I haven't seen that cover. It's really good. <laughs> I'm just going to stare at it and you guys can just talk amongst yourselves. Um, no, uh, so basically, yeah, all new Wolverine. I'm not from here. Um, <laughs> all new Wolverine. She's stepping into the mantle of Wolverine. She's, man, that's a good cover. Um, we well, got some great art too. There's from... a surprise that, you know, look at that. Yes, right. David incredible. Lopez, David and I, right? they're doing an incredible job. I love that splash panel. That's where we first see her in issue one. Um, basically, she's, we don't want to give too much away, but she's, um, she's just as kick ass as you know her, but she's trying not to kill. And this is interesting. Who said, ah? <laughs> 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 it's, it's not the worst thing. She's, you know, she's been around death her whole life, and she's trying, so she's stuck between two situations where two big forces want to kill each other, and she's trying not to get too stabby, which is really difficult. I mean, she's still Wolverine, so people are going to lose, like, less integral digits. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of, we don't want to give too much away, and there's a lot to give away. There's a lot of surprises in this book. But look at that. Just gaze it's with just wonder incredible. and awe. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. Oh, here's another one I'm excited about. We got all new X-Men coming up really, really soon with Dennis Hopeless and Mark Bagley. The Return of the Blob in issue four. What? <laughs> Dennis, will you talk to us about all new X-Men, what you guys are doing, and about your team? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> I've got the original four uh, male x -Men. For some reason, every time I try and say their names, I forget one. <laughs> but, so you got Iceman, Cyclops, Teen Iceman, Teen Cyclops, Teen Angel, Teen Beast. Yep. I did it. You did it, man. Yeah. And we also have uh, All-New Wolverine um, and Heidi and Evan from Wolverine and the X-Men and various other things. Um, and basically, we have a team of kids in this, the post-Secret Wars environment for uh, mutants is kind of awful. And um, we have a team of kids that don't really like the direction that the, the adults have gone. They've decided, they've decided to get back to their roots and kind of travel around the Marvel Universe and lead by example and be superheroes again. So it's a very like classic beat the crap out of villains and show people that mutants can be cool and, and, and good people uh, X-Men story. So we're gonna, it's a little bit of a road trip story and we're gonna dig into all of the teen angst and, and whatnot that you all love from X-Men. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. We got Mark Bagley on art, so it looks like a classic X-Men story. Uh, Following Bendis and having Mark Bagley draw it is really intimidating for me because <laughs> it's like my favorite book in college was Ultimate Spider-Man, but um, no, it's going to be great. Heck yeah. Thank you, Dennis. <laughs> oh boy. We have Power Man and Iron Fist, David Walker, Sanford Green, putting the band back together. David, you, would you talk about this, this amazing book? I don't know. I'm, I'm just freaking out over it all still. <laughs> um, no, it's, you know, this is like pretty much everybody's favorite duo in, in the Marvel Universe, and they actually have not acted as a duo in their own book for, what, like 30 years or something like that? So this is about these two guys, these two iconic characters, and their friendship. There's a lot of history. Um, in, in real life, Barry White and Wink Martindale were best friends, and so I'm sort of using that as, like, <laughs> this, as, my, as my influences, uh, because we all have that friend that everybody else looks at and like, why are you friends with this person? And, um, and that's Luke and Danny, so I've just been having a blast with it, and Sanford and I have just sort of been bouncing ideas off of each other about how these two will interact, the, the dynamic between them, and it's really just, you know, it's a lot of, like, the classic adventures, because they always had these weird adventures with these wacky villains, um, but it's, it's, at the end of the day, it's really about their friendship, and, and like that's the thing that really appeals to me about the book because 
even within the history of the Marvel Universe, there's, there's a lot of friendships, you know, there was Ben Grimm and Reed Richards and, 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 you know, Steve Rogers and Bucky Barnes, but all these friendships existed before those books started. They were characters that knew each other before. But in, in the Marvel Universe, Luke and Danny are two of the key people that came together. We saw that relationship evolve. And so it's really about this evolution of that relationship and, and where they are in their lives now. Heck yeah. Awesome. I'm so stoked. <laughs> now we also have the Howling Commandos of S.H.I.E.L.D. Frank Barbieri, Brent Schooniver. I think that's how you say it. Katie, is that how you say it? Yes, I think that is how you say it. Can you talk about this amazing I can. book? So this book is going to be super fun because it's all of these amazingly wonderful monsters. Uh, you've got, I I'm going to totally forget half of them, but uh, you've got Dum Dum, you've got Orgo, you've got Teen Abomination. Uh, it's, it's a really cool... Man-Thing werewolf, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's a cool uh, group, and they each have their own uh, unique abilities, like any team. And uh, so Maria Hill, you know, was like, yeah, I need you guys to get into the underbelly, the more uh, weirder side of things. And so that's kind of where we're going with this title. And uh, as you can see, we've got zombies, we've got some, some crazy stuff happening, and it's basically an excuse for me to uh, put monsters in books and make some, some really weird horror type stuff. Um, so yeah. Hope you awesome. guys like it. You also hit monkeys in it too, I forgot. Oh nice, yeah, right. Yes. He's on Dum Dum's shoulder. Hit Monkey's got his own wonderful introduction panel too. It's one of my favorites in the first issue. <laughs> Excellent. Ooh, here's another one that's coming up. Venom Space Night. Yes. Written by Robbie Thompson with incredible art by Ariel Olivetti making his grand return to Marvel Comics. Robbie, will you talk about uh, about the new Venom book? Uh, this is uh, this is Venom in Space, um, which was I think you and I had uh, breakfast and you brought this book up and I was like, please, I will murder everyone to to write this book. <laughs> yep, yep. Because <laughs> it's Venom in Space. You pretty much had me there. Um, so Venom is 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 part of the Guardians, but these are some of the adventures that he's going on uh, independent of those adventures, and he's gonna uh, obviously he's gonna there's some fisticuffs. Um, uh, and Ariel is just absolutely killing it on this book. Uh, we have a lot of really fun emails um, where it's like, uh, how do you feel about like a planet of crustaceans? And I get like a thumbs up emoji. Um, <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Um, and this is, you know, it's, it's kind of a second chance for both Flash and for, and for the suit. Um, you know, they've, uh, the suit got cleansed in uh, Planet of the Symbiotes, which is awesome. Uh, everyone read that? It's fantastic. It's really... It, it, and, and so this is kind of a second chance for both of them, uh, you know, to make a name for themselves and, and ultimately to be what they both wanted to be, which is, which is a hero. I mean, I think Flash is a badass and I think Venom is a badass and, and we're having a lot of fun showing just that. Awesome. Thank you. Anybody here read Spider-Gwen? Yes! She's still working on number one. Uh, so excited about this relaunch. Coming up, we're, we just, it's the, we didn't, you don't, uh, fix what ain't broke, right? And so we've got Jason Latour, Robbie Rodriguez, Rico Renzi. Uh, Jason, you want to talk about your plans for our relaunch? Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not really afraid. All right. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, pretty much continuing the same vibe and tone. The band's all sort of back together again, uh, so to speak. Uh, <clears throat> you know, back again for the, for the third time, I guess. Um, so what we're trying to do with the first arc is sort of give people a way back into the universe or a way into it if they've never been there by going back and sort of exploring some of the things that we left hanging out there in her first appearance. So the first story arc is uh, directly related to the night Peter Parker died. Uh, so we get to see experience, uh, or Gwen learns that there's a, a lizard running around New York City uh, which, of course, is terrifying to her because this is directly related to Peter's legacy. Uh, so <clears throat> she, the last thing on Earth she wants is for Peter to be found out as the lizard, even if it would, like, cost her, or even if it would free her from, you know, the suspicion of the police. So she starts this investigation to sort of, like, track down who these lizards are, and that gives us an opportunity to start to learn about her past and we'll get to meet people like Harry Osborn and Norman Osborn and sort of set up uh, something really cool that will be coming down the line later in the year. Um, yeah, so here's some great Robbie Rodriguez and Rico Renzi pages and you see on the third one there is, she doesn't actually talk to a flat blue person 
That's, uh, we're, we're, we're keeping this a secret, who she's talking to in that panel, so you can speculate all you want, but you'll see this other character at the end of Spider-Gwen number one, of Radioactive Spider-Gwen number one. What's that? Yeah, it's not a ghost. That's not a ghost. <laughs> it should Spoiler. be a ghost, though. It could, it could, yeah. we could rewrite that. <laughs> right. yeah. We could rework that. We're rewriting it right now. It's a ghost now. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we also got Spider-Woman. Anyone reading that out there? This is one of my favorites. Uh, we got Dennis Hopeless. We got Javier Rodriguez. Uh, it, it's such an amazing book. And we got big, big plans for Jessica Drew coming up. For those of you who might have heard, uh, eight months after Secret Wars, she's uh, a little bit of ways along with a pregnancy. And for someone who has stated outwardly, you know, she, she doesn't want kids in the past, something's changed in her life. Um, Dennis, you want to talk about this first arc and, and what we got coming? Yeah, uh, the premise of the book, since we kind of switched things up on issue five of the first, of the first run, uh, has been that Jess wants to, she gave up the Avengers to try and build a new life, a real life, like to be a normal person. So we're hitting her in the face over and over with real life. Like, real life isn't easy, and especially for someone who's never had one. So when we're coming back, it's kind of like the, the start of a season two. Uh, we're going to hit her in the face with a real-life brick, which is she is uh, she's pregnant now. So uh, the first arc is all about um, what it's like to have to take on that new responsibility and, and what, how does her life change and, and what does it mean to be a superhero who has you know, something that's more important than, than what she's used to doing. So it's, it's, it's tough for Jess. It's tough for Jess not to just barrel in head first and beat the crap out of people. And she has to think about her kid first. And especially when it's, you know, it's inside her body. She can't just, just mix it up. So that's basically what our first arc is, is, is just struggling with that. And crazy, crazy, crazy things happen to her, which force, yep. her, <laughs> which force her to save the day, even though she can't, she can't do it with her fist. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. And look, look at the art. Can we go back? Going back. I want you to look at Javier's art, because I don't really do anything on this book. I just like have a conversation with Javier, and then this is what I get. He's incredible. Uh, yeah, just, just unbelievable so work. Um, heck yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah. Yes. Coming up, we have Silk. Uh, that book is relaunching as well with some big, big changes. This is the covered issue four by Helen Chen. Uh, unbelievable. Um, Robbie, you want to talk about the, uh, your plans for the relaunch? Well, Silk, um, we, we saw her a little bit in, briefly in, uh, there was a little short in Amazing Spider-Man uh, this week, and I, I guess the big change is that uh, she's, she's broke bad. She's, a, she's working for Black Cat um, uh, for reasons that will be revealed in, uh, in issue one. Um, but this is still the same Cindy Moon. I mean, uh, we've had a passage of time, but this is still someone who's dealing with uh, a lot of more personal issues and a lot of... Uh, issues of not being able to relate to other human beings, having been locked in a bunker for 10 years. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, one of the things that you know, Nick and I talked about from the very beginning was trying to make this a little bit more of a, of a personal story. So there's a bit of a bigger canvas because she's, she's, uh, she's a bit of a bad guy right now, um, but uh, it's still the same uh, Cindy Moon that, uh, that hopefully you, you guys know and love. Absolutely. Very cool. And, then, and now we are up to, uh, we've got a big announcement for you guys here today as well. So coming up, and there's a typo on the slide, so I apologize for that. But starting in April, Spider-Gwen, Spider-Woman, and Silk are crossing over in our gigantic Spider-Women event. Yep. So starting yeah. off. Yep. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> so being bookended by a couple of one-shots, each of the books will cross over. Uh, we've got an incredible story coming up. We actually had a meeting on Thursday, ha like hashing out the second half of the story uh, to make sure that, that it worked great. And oh, it was electric. It was such a, such a great meeting. Who wants to talk about this to start off? Uh, Jason, you take it away? Because it starts with Gwen, I guess. Um, basically, if you, Spider-Gwen was born out of a, mo a crossover event. She, from the very start, has known that there's multiple universes out there. And since she's sort of a solo hero in her own universe that doesn't really have a lot of people that she can bounce things off of, one of the things that we're going to start to seed very early in Spider-Gwen is that she occasionally visits the 616 for advice or to bounce things off of Jessica Drew, who's sort of become sort of a mentor to her. And so that sort of opens up this whole world for us to explore where the gate works both ways. Uh, so what we're going to begin with is... A, 
you know, around the time this starts is that Gwen has been to the 616 a lot, but the, but the ladies have never been to visit her. And that's going to set off a whole chain of events, which leads us to meet uh, the Cindy Moon and the Jessica Drew of Earth 65, which are pretty rough customers, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's, it's, it's going to be so cool. Like I said, it's, it starts in April, <laughs> not February. It starts in April, uh, and it goes through two issues of each of the books and a couple of bookends, and the story is incredible. Um, Robbie or Dennis, you guys want to talk about anything else with it? Or? Can I talk about the Ballad of Squid Boy? Because that's really what I want to discuss. <laughs> want to talk about Clown Town as well? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, we had the most fun in the room was just coming up with franchises in the Earth 65, like uh, coffee shops are called Stark's Bucks. <laughs> but, um, no good. Excellent. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. Uh, this, the, the, you can't follow that pun game. No, you can't. Can. I don't know. The story takes place, for Jess, it takes place right after she's had her child. Um, so it's kind of her first foyer out of the house after the, the, the first two months after. I have twins that are 11 months old. The first two months of that is insane. It's like you're on some sort of crazy acid trip that you can't escape from. Uh, and then eventually it gets a little bit easier and you can leave the house. And so for Jess, this is like she leaves the house, she goes to have brunch with friends and, like, and, and mentor these people. And then awful, awful things happen to her and she gets stuck. So... Uh, so yeah, it's we just. Keep She's going to have to pay her. some overtime to the babysitters. Right. It's yeah. Once she left, you know, she left her baby with porcupine, which is a bad decision to begin with, and then and then all this pops off. So. Not a real porcupine. Not like not an animal. Like but as, the porcupine's but, uh, a character. The, por the porcupine of Earth 65 is a porcupine. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. So, Spider Gwen, you you finish it? What'd you think? Awesome. She said fantastic. Now don't tell anybody what happens in it until next Wednesday when it comes out. Thank you so much, Spider Gwen. All right, let's see who else. Uh, Ms. Marvel, come on up. Come on up. Thank you so much. <laughs> Changing of the guard. Yeah, of course. Have a seat. Excellent. All right, and so that is the end of our slideshow, but it is not the end of the panel because we've got time for you guys to ask your questions. If you've got a question for anyone up here, step right up to the microphone over there. And the way we do things at Marvel panels, or at least the ones that I run, uh, when you come up to the microphone, you say your name, and then everyone in the room says hi, and then that person's name. So, you, sir, what's your name? It's a, uh, my name's Tarek. What is it? Tarek. Kari? Tarek. 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 Uh, hi, Tarek. Hi, Tarek. Awesome. Uh, I'm a big fan of Quentin Quire. I didn't see he was on any rosters for any of the X-Books coming up. It felt like uh, from AVX on, he was being built up to kind of be the leader of the next young mutant generation. And like nobody really even brushed over that the world would have ended if he wasn't there in Access. Uh, what's next for him if he's going to have any role or is he like benched right now? Yeah. Well, we're, we're rolling out our X-Men announcements slowly as we go along. You haven't, you've only seen the tip of the iceberg so far. Um, and I know that several of the writers who are working on those X-Books are big Quentin Quire, Kid Omega fans. Uh, I, would, I, I wouldn't be too shocked that you, if you have to wait very long. You, you're, he'll be coming back soon, I'm sure. Thank you. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. All right, what's your name? Hi, uh, Justin. Hi, nice to meet everybody. Hi, Justin. Hi. This is amazing. Um, X-23 has actually been one of my favorite characters forever. So the fact that she's getting such a spotlight now is like a dream come true. So thank you, first of all. Um, yeah. So my question is, is that when you're doing rebranding like this and you're really trying to pick characters, can you give us some insight as to kind of the thought process and how it becomes where, okay, now we're going to take her in that direction? Because it's fascinating, especially with Thor is a good example. It's how you came so just well, like to that point. It starts in the creative. Uh, in, in the case of Thor, it started with Jason Aaron writing a story or pitching a story in which Thor would be unable to pick up the hammer. And the question is, then who can? Because we're going to publish a Thor book, Jason. <laughs> and you're going to write it. No, and, and, no. so basically he already knew who it was. So he just had to sell us on it. In the case of, of X-23, it was a little different. We knew we were killing Wolverine. And we knew we were killing Wolverine, that we were not doing it to bring him back three months later magically or was it all a bait and switch. We have no get out of jail plan to this day. So to do that, you got to decide, well, who's going to be the next Wolverine? And so you start the discussions. Is it going to be Dokken? Is it going to be Sabretooth? You get the gist. Right. Old Man Logan. 
Uh, and for me, always the prohibitive front runner was X-23. Just thought, what could be cooler than having a woman in that iconic yellow and blue outfit? Don't go, uh, what is it, brown and gold people don't yell at me now. But uh, the blue and yellow just, and you know, you just feel it. So that's, how we, that's how we did it. It's awesome. Yeah. Thanks awesome. so much, guys. Cool. Uh, Iron Fist over there. You want to read Spider-Gwen? Come on up. Take a seat. All right, what's your name? Hi, I'm Sunil. Sunil? Hi. Hi, Sunil. Hi, folks. Uh, yeah, so speaking of spider women, uh, there, there are two uh, spider women that have been around forever that I feel like haven't been getting as much of the spotlight, and I just want to know what's up with uh, Julia Carpenter and Anya Corazon? All right, so, heck yeah. All right, good, good question. Julia Carpenter, we last saw her in the last couple issues of Mark Wade's Daredevil run. Uh, and that, that is not the last you'll see of her. Uh, Dan Slott's got some plans. Uh, and then you also asked about who else? Anya. Okay, Anya is in Web Warriors. Uh, issue one is on sale in about a month. Uh, she's one of the main inter, like, interdimensional spider team that's traveling. So we got this book coming up called Web Warriors. Comes out of our Spider-Verse event, okay? It's a Spider-Man team book. And a bunch of different spider characters from different dimensions are basically going and pitching in where spider characters from other dimensions who died in Spider-Verse. So they're going to like protect those universes here and there. I, I just wanted to add that like I, in uh, Spider-Woman, when during Spider-Verse, I loved the friendship between Anya and Spider-Gwen. I thought that was pretty awesome. Yeah, it yeah was that was great. a ton of fun to write. Yeah. But they stole the character away and gave it to a different book so I don't get to use her anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my fault. Uh, Hawkeye. Hey, bro. Is it? I'm Jose. <laughs> Hi, Hawkeye. So maybe the answer to this question is a spoiler for the Extraordinary X-Men, but in the preview that was released where Storm tells Jean that the Terrigen Mist is making mutants sterile, which means no more mutants will be born, aren't mutants, like, uh, yeah, just that a mutation, like, they're not born from mutants, like the first mutants weren't no. just born from mutants, so how would the Terrigen Mist making them sterile mean that no more mutants are going to be born? I, th I think it was a figure of speech. It was like a way to express what's going on. I think it's that there are no more, you know, X genes getting turned on. It's basically like... We're not scientists. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you're not wrong. Thank you. But, but you are correct. That, 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 yeah. yeah, but that's more of like a figure of speech just cool. put in easily, re easily recognizable terms. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, bro. Thanks, Hawkeye. Hello, sir. What's your name? I'm Mike. Hi, Mike. Uh, I was wondering, as we can continue to see a uh, young Iceman in the all-new sort of series, um, is there going to be any more discussion or exploration of his sexual orientation and no, we're just um, his drop inner latent thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, there's, there's a big part of our, our, our opening several arcs. We're going to be watching Bobby and, and seeing well, we're eight months later, so he's kind of gotten to explore that a little bit off panel. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a huge part of the character going forward and him figuring out you know, who he is and who he wants to be. So absolutely. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much, Mike. Deadpool, what's your name? Hi, my name is Elijah. <clears throat> Hi, Elijah. And uh, today I just wanted to ask, uh, first off, I'm going to say that um, I've always been a fan of Spider-Verse, and I've always loved the character Maz Moraz. And, I've, and you've never ever, um, in this panel, you haven't explained anything about Miles Morales, so is anything going to happen to him? Oh, yeah. We're launching, you must not have heard, we're launching a Spider-Man book starring Miles Morales. No adjective, Spider-Man. Brian Michael Bendis is writing it, Sarah Pacelli is drawing it, the two who, who kicked it off in the first place, and he is in the Marvel Universe after Secret Wars. Now, how he got there, you're going to have to wait and see, but we're, we're going to announce our... We're talking about the launch date really soon, um, but Sarah is on issue two, uh, and it's incredible art, and the story is so good. So good. He's also a member of the, uh, whatever, all new, all different Avengers, too. Absolutely. Yeah, and, by the, and by the way, um, there better be explosions in every single book, because Michael Bay wouldn't be proud. What, what was that? Michael Bay wouldn't be proud if there's no explosions in every book. <laughs> <laughs> Here, come on up. I got a comic for you. And again, no spoilers until next Wednesday, all right? Anyone who's reading this. Uh, who, any other, let's see. Black Cat, you want to come up and read Spider-Gwen? 
Excellent. Come on up. All right. What's your name, sir? Vince. Hi, Vince. Everyone, come on. Hi, Vince. Hi, Vince. There we go. So, um, my question is related with diversity in the Marvel Universe, which is something great. So, I congratulate all, all of you guys because it's really great that you're pushing diversity agenda and human rights in comic books, which is such an important thing. <laughs> but my question is very specifically related with Romani characters in Marvel. I'm Romani myself, and human rights activist, and very recently, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver has been uh, reconnected and not been Magneto's kid, so they are fully Romani, from a Romani couple, as Dr. Doom and many other characters, and I'm asking myself is in, if in the uh, all new, all different Marvel universe, a Romani people is going to receive a fair treatment full of dignity where they will be represented properly. That's my question. Well, yeah, well, yeah. well you can look forward. To, like, I'm not sure, you know, each writer kind of takes a different angle on, on characters. Uh, but we have Scarlet Witch has her own solo book coming up. James Robinson is writing it. The, each issue is drawn by a different incredible artist. Um, so there's a solo book centered on her in particular how deep into the Romani they go. I honestly don't know. I'm not working on the book. Um, but I do know that, that James thinks about this stuff a lot. Uh, and he digs deeply into the characters. So, uh, but I, I, I can't imagine him not treating it with dignity, to be, to be honest. So I, I, again, I can't speak too specifically just because I don't work on the book. Um, but I would say pick up that book and, and give it a look. And I know that we'll be treating her with respect, for sure. I just think it's, it's, if you look history of Marvel Comics or many other American comic book editorials and the treatment of Romani people, which has presented us as thieves, witches, stealing children, assassins, whatever, I think it is very important you just not put POC on comic books, but you tackle reality issues these people is suffering and struggling. That's just my opinion, but yeah. thank you very much. No, then thank you for expressing it. Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Um, uh, right now, one of my favorite characters is Old Man Logan. Uh, you'll see from my facial hair. Um, Indeed. <laughs> it's um, great facial hair. Thank you. Um, uh, is, it might sound weird coming from a teen, but I really like the fact that there are so many elderly characters coming into the Marvel Universe. Awesome. Like uh, Old Man Hawkeye and Old Man Cap and Old Man Logan. Um, Aunt May, yeah, St uh, big role. <laughs> no, Never I love the classics. Yeah, um, I'm a big fan. And I love uh, if we could like, uh, where was I going with this? Um, <laughs> could we get any more info about like those elderly characters? Sure. Well, uh, we've got I, I'm, we've got Old Man Logan in Extraordinary X Men, and other plans for him as well. But I can't remember if we've announced Man, yet or not. Man. I don't remember. But uh, other plans for that. Aunt May is going to be a staple of Amazing Spider-Man. I do know that. Look at Amazing Spider-Man number four in particular. Uh, four is an old man. Hawkeye. You will see a lot more of old man Hawkeye <laughs> in there. And there are huge plans for Steve Rogers uh, in the near future as and well. Cable. There's plans for Cable, right? Yeah. yeah. What's that? Well, there's plans for Cable, right? Professor Cable. See, Cable's old. This whole diversity thing is a smokescreen for our real agenda to make all of our characters really old. <laughs> We're doing uh, old woman. I would silk draw next. the old man book. Like if there's an old man team book, I would draw that book. We know, Jason. <laughs> we know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, since uh, there's a Carnage book coming out, right? Oh yeah. Um, would there ever be Carnage Space Night? <laughs> well. Uh, he's been in space once, and the last time he was there, he was ripped in half, so he might not want to go back. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> Step right up, sir. What's your name? Cuttlefish. Whoop, 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 whoop. Hi! <laughs> uh, my question is about, uh, well, actually, you've uh, showed a lot of love to symbiotes throughout the Secret Wars. There have been a lot of them. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, aside from Space Night and uh, Maw of Madness, uh, including Toxin, uh, if there'll be more of the, uh, the other symbiotes um, coming out, like uh, Mania um, and Hybrid. Well, Carnage is going to be in Maw of Madness. He's got his own comic. I was just wondering if there's going to be any, any more. Yeah, right now the main three that we're dealing with 
are Venom, Carnage, and Toxin, who Eddie Brock is wearing. There's a Carnage book where there's a team, awesome team hunting Carnage. It's incredible. Jerry Conway's writing it. Mike Perkins, who's here at the, at the show, is drawing it. It's great. But you will see a lot more symbiotes in Venom Space Night, right, Robbie? Yes, yes, we will, will pretty quickly. Will they be uh, rogue symbiotes, or will they be more members of the Clintar? Uh, I can answer that. That's yeah. a spoiler. But yes, you will see you will see some some new symbiotes uh, in in, in uh, yeah. No spoilers. But yes, yes. And and Mania is not somebody somebody that we've forgotten about. She's just not in like right now. We're out in space, and 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 she's not in space. Um, but that's not a character that yeah. we've, we've forgotten about or anything. Like that. Right. Awesome. Thank you. Eating your symbiotes. Hello. What's your name? Uh, my name is uh, Damien. I uh, just wanted to say. Hi, Dave. Hi. Hello. David. Hello. Uh, so I just wanted to say uh, Secret Wars has been incredible. It's like digging into a toy chest and pulling out everything. That being said, thank you for the Chris Dark, Chris the Warriors reference in uh, the uh, Jason Aaron book. That was <laughs> Oh, really yeah, awesome. Weird World. Yeah, yeah. yeah Chris Dark. Um, what I wanted to know is that with the all new, all different Marvel universe, are we going to see any type of like uh, anthology series where you deal with like more lesser known characters type of stuff? I don't think we have plans yeah. for that right now. Um, but as far as like Weird World... There's more, we're not done with Weird World yet. Um, there'll be some more stuff like that coming down the pike. Uh, super exciting. Uh, and that, I can't remember if we've announced either, but that's going to be really cool stuff. Um, and we, we love digging into the toy chest and, and pulling out, you know, odd little things. You'll see a lot of stuff in Web Warriors where they go into different universes and such. Um, but I don't think we have plans right now for an anthology book. No, but I think that. that the you know the modest success of things like Secret Love, which went to a second printer, encouraging. So yeah. you know, uh, you know, I think it's a really exciting time in comics right now because uh, we're doing stuff now that three or four years ago it wouldn't have worked. Right. Could have been the same material, the same quality, and there just there wouldn't be the oxygen for it. So enough enough people now are embracing little books like that that. You know, we're able to to build some momentum and build around them. Books, you know, I look at a book like Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, and I think that that book's got a great shot at sticking. You know, yeah. Squirrel Girl's a little book that could. You know, Howard the Duck outsold a lot of Batman books when it yeah. debuted, yeah. so it's a great world Squirrel to live Girl, in. Squirrel Girl, come on. Yeah. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to say was the uh, character design for Iron Fist is pretty cool. I see like the reference to Master Killer and. Game of Death. What kind of enemies can we see them fighting in those books? In that book, just super cool ones. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, the, the your heroes are only as cool as the villains that they fight. And and Power Man and Iron Fist. If you go back and look at some of that classic stuff, just have some of the the wackiest you know like villains you could possibly imagine in the Marvel universe. So I, I'm playing around with with some of them, and you'll see some classic characters return. I just want to say go Niners, too. Go Niners. You. There you go. <laughs> Hello, what's your name, sir? Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Hi. Hi. Hi uh, my question is for two main spider women. Um, I noticed in Spider-Verse, like, everyone was kind of dead, and Maddie Franklin, one of my favorite spider women, wasn't included. Is there a chance that she'll possibly come back? I'm sorry, who is that? I didn't... Ma Maddie Franklin. Oh, Maddie Franklin. Uh, we don't have any immediate plans for Maddie right now, um, but you never know. All right. And will Spider Bitch get more, like, screen time, uh, other than um, Old Man Logan? Oh, 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 from from Old Man Logan's universe. Yeah. I right now I think we're kind of steering clear just to see what they're doing in Old Man Logan. We don't want to step on those toes right now. But yeah, she was great having on Superior Spider Man side of that of that event. Super cool to have. So thank you for asking. Thank you. Hello? Is that Nick Fury? Two eyes. I can't be the real I'm Nick Fury. <laughs> What's I your just, name? My name is Julius. Hi, Julius. I just want to know if uh, we'll find out Spider Woman's baby daddy. That's a mystery. <laughs> Dennis Hopeless. Yeah, well, it's not a mystery. Jess just doesn't want to talk about it. It's none yeah. of your business. Oh, it's a mystery to us. That's a mystery to us. It's not right. a mystery to Jess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, We'll address it, but not right off the bat. Uh, she, she really does think it's nobody's business. So the first arc, she'll be asked, and you're not going to get an answer. But eventually, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Okay, cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Hello, sir. What's your name? Hi, uh, my name's Sebastian. Hi, Sebastian. Hi. Yeah, so uh, even after the movie, I'm still a really big fan of the Fantastic Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm just curious. No comment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no comment. Uh, but even, but 
And I'm just curious, um, especially in the wake of Invincible Iron Man, uh, what the fate of, um, Reed, of Reed Richards, Susan Richards, and Valer Richards, and all his kids overall, like what we'll be seeing in the future for them? You're going to have to wait till Secret Wars is over. You still got, I think, issue six just is coming out, or just came out last week. You got three more issues to go, but you're getting the, maybe the biggest Fantastic Four story ever. And we got a Yancey Street game, gang back there. Oh, man. That was the best thing I've ever seen. Who let that riffraff in here? Who let that riffraff in? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, thanks. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Hello. What's your name? Hi. My name's Jonathan. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. Hi. Um, so I kind of want to get to the point, and I don't want to sound like a jerk, but thank you guys all so much for, for what you do. Um, but I've been a comic book fan um, for like two and a half decades, and what got me into comic books was the X-Men. And I'm admittedly, like, really scared of what's, like, you know, going to happen to, like, my passion. Like, I mean, I know, like, you guys put out in the press, like, oh, we're not canceling the X-Men. But, like, then we see, like, these other characters that are part of, like, the Disney Marvel Universe come to the forefront. And it's kind of like the X-Men characters aren't on ads so much anymore. And they're getting sterilized. And, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, hey. it's really hard. Like, it's really oh. disconcerting. And, like, I mean, I probably sound like... I don't know, kind of ridiculous I, right now, but it's like scary from a fan's <laughs> point of view to like see that kind of stuff. I hear you, and I think, but, absolutely, I hear you. But here's the thing too, uh, you'll ne you won't find bigger X-Men fans than the people up on this table. I know you, and you know, for all your work. Axel's a huge fan, I'm a huge, I, I mean, X-Men X-Men yeah. are who yeah. got yeah. me into comics reading at all. I, I, like, you know, these are rumors. They, they, like the X-Men are a huge part of, of all of our plans. And this is not the first time the X-Men have had rough luck with, like, the stare. I mean, no more mutants. Like, they're, like they've, uh, they've I, you know, sentinel programs. Like, they've always had a target on their back. And you get the best stories when you put them into roughest places. But, I mean, as, as you saw from our announcements here, we're putting some of our very best creators. On, on Extraordinary X-Men, it's Jeff Lemire, who is one of the quickest rising superstar writers that we have. And Umberto Ramos, who drew the highest selling comic of last year. You know, Amazing Spider-Man. Like, these are, these are not teams. We've got Dennis and Mark Bagley. You know, we've got, uh, we've got Tom Taylor and David Lopez. You know, we've got these incredible X-Men books coming up. And, the, and like I said before, it's the tip of the iceberg. Don't believe the rumor sites. It's nonsense. The X-Men aren't going anywhere. We love them too much. We love them too much. <laughs> Step right. What's your name? My name is Kadeem. Hi, Kadeem. Did I get it? Um, I don't think I did. I got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just want to say, like, I'm a big fan of the X-Men, and uh, especially, like, Rick Remner's uh, Uncanny X-Force and Jason Aaron's Wolverine and X-Men. Heck yeah. And a particular character that I felt like was really getting developed much more was Evan Kid Apocalypse. And I know he's coming to, I, I know he's probably going to be the new member for all new X-Men, but I wanted to know, has he, like, overcome his past, or has a little bit is going to be coming towards him joining the new team? That's all going to be addressed in the book. I love Evan, too, and I really want to... Uh, uh, most of the characters in the book are dealing with some sort of, this is what I'm supposed to be when I grow up, and that's terrifying. Uh, and Evan fits right into that. So he's, it made a lot of sense to put him on the team, and we will be developing all of that. Uh, so everything, uh, everything you wanted to know and, and, and wanted to see when you were reading that, we're going to delve we're headfirst into it. So. Okay. Um, also, I just want to know, is there any news about Hope Summers in any uh, future X-Books? I would put Hope Summers in the book right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The problem is she looks a lot like another teen redhead, um, <laughs> so it's a little bit confusing. Um, Do all so redheads look alike to you, Dennis? <laughs> when they're drawings, yes. That's gingerist. <laughs> He's a gingerist. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, if they would let me, I, I don't know, I, I, will, I will try to get hope in something, because I love writing the character. I wrote her in uh, Cable and X-Force, and she's amazing. So I agree with you. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't have any plans immediately. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, sir. What's your name? Hi, I'm Matt. Hi, Matt. Uh, this is probably best for Dennis. I was wondering, uh, Avengers Arena was one of my favorite books. And, like, Thank recent. you. It was awesome. And I was wondering if there are any plans for another Avengers Arena or anything to do with the characters from Avengers Arena and Agent, uh, Undercover? That's not for me because I don't get to make that decision. I'd still be writing Avengers Arena yeah. if I could. Uh, <laughs> um, I will use the, all of those characters or any of those characters any chance that I get because uh, obviously we had a blast making it. Um, but I don't, I don't know if there are plans for 
Yeah, a bunch of those characters you see pop up in various places. Yeah. Probably not all together, but in various places. All right. Death Rockets in House of M, which is our final issue that hasn't come out yet. So it's a Secret Wars book. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Hawkeye. What's your name? John. Hi, John. Uh, I started reading comics on, on Ultimate Spider-Man, and I was just wondering if the supporting cast from Ultimate Spider-Man was going to show up anywhere, like the Ultimate MJ, Gwen Stacy, and Aunt May. Uh, you'll see... You'll see some of his supporting cast in his book coming up. I, I'll guarantee you a few out of the, out of the gate. Genki, you'll see. Yep. You'll see his dad, Jefferson. Uh, and I'll say, I'll give you one more. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say this, but Bombshell as well. So I'll, 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 that, that's the, again, that's all I'll say for right now, but that's, I'm not revealing everything. So. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Hello sir. What's your name? Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Hello. I have a question. Um, big X-Men fan, wondering when uh, Gambit's going to show up. Uh, Gambit is showing up somewhere. It might not be. I, I don't think it's in the X-Men book. Where, I, I know where this is. I just saw something. We're probably talking about it at a different panel. He is showing up with a major role in an upcoming book. I just can't remember exactly where. Okay. Uh, one more. No, he is. Uh, he is. Um, Kane Parker. When Kane. He, yes. I mean, Kane, Kane, Kane died in Spider-Verse and dead is dead, man. No one ever comes back. No one ever comes back. He's uh, dead. You won't ever see him again. Never, never, never. You might see him again. All right, thank you. That's, all right, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even in that event, we showed, his, we showed a hand coming out of what was left of that giant spider body. So, you know. Anyway, Hawkeye's back. I forgot to mention, if you see Kate Bishop around and she tells you that she's the better Hawkeye, she's lying. Oh. We'll also, Lucky loves me more. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hi. Uh, What's your name? name? My name is Jay. Hi, Jay. Uh, this is probably more of an Axel question, but if anybody else wants to jump in. There have been a lot of changes to some of like the classic Marvel characters. Steve Rogers is an old man. Wolverine's dead. Bruce Banner's not the Hulk. Given that Marvel's IP goes so many other places aside from just the comics, how hard is it to fight the pressure to kind of regress back to the status quo, if you will, and like bring the classics back? It's not that hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> people greatly uh, overstate how much we have to follow the studio, the studio follows us. We, I, I root for the movies as much as anyone, but it has nothing to do with my job stability, Nick's job stability or anything. We, we, we do comic books. We're supposed to do stories in the Marvel Universe, bend it, break it, try and put it back together as best you can. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, right now, we're having a lot of fun. We're making decisions that we think make sense for publishing. You know, the fact that, that Amity has chose the Hulk feels right. Mm -hmm. It just feels right at this moment to step away from poor Bruce Banner, woe is me, I've got to carry this burden, what do I do next? To give it to a 19-year-old Korean-American whiz kid and have him have a blast with it just sounds like the right thing to do. It feels like the right thing to do. That doesn't mean Bruce's story's over. Bruce is going to have a story in that book, and it's going to be fascinating. And I say that as somebody who loves the Hulk. I like the Hulk more than Cap, Thor, actually, or Iron Man. I actually think yeah. the best Bruce Banner stories were like sort of like the Dark Reign era when he wasn't even the Hulk, when he's just Bruce Banner, I think he's actually... Well, that's great for you, because I think that a lot of people might find a lot of meat on the bone of his story. So, yeah. you know, to get back to the point, it's, we're, we do what we do, uh, and, and we have a lot of fun doing it, and that's to the credit of Marvel that we're allowed to keep doing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Keep it up. Thank you. Hello, sir, what's your name? Uh, my name's Will. Hi, Will. Wood? Yeah. Bill. Yes. Hi, Bill. How you doing? Welcome. Quick question about, um, I'm really excited for the Power Man and uh, Iron Fist comic book. Great to see that coming. Two questions, though. I see uh, Luke Cage is now, like, in a suit. Does he have a real 9-to-5 job now? <laughs> and also, will he be interacting with, like, uh, members from the Mighty Avengers, like the Blue Marvel and people like that? Well, he, he, his new job is he's a husband and a father. So <laughs> that's, that's part of it. Um, <laughs> If you, if you like, really look at the history of Luke Cage and Marvel, there's few characters that have had such an incredible arc, you know, from being hero for hire with the, mm -hmm. you know, chain belt and everything to actually, yeah, to being the leader of the Avengers. Mm -hmm. um, so he's just, he's just grown a lot, and that makes him a really interesting character to play with. Um, 
And in terms of some of the mighty Avengers, you know, at some point, people will show up. But right now, the, the, the core relationship is between Luke and Danny. It's between Power Man and Iron Fist. And it's really about solidifying that relationship. And then we'll see how they, um, not only how they interact with other characters, but how they're perceived by other characters. Because they really, there's, there, it's like, if, if Power Man walks into a room, if Luke Cage walks into a room, people are like, oh, there's Luke Cage. <laughs> Iron Fist walks into him, they're like, oh, there's Iron Fist. But when they walk into a room together, you're going to see, like, everybody in the Marvel Universe, like, even the guy who's selling the hot dogs out of a cart is like, yo, Power Man and Iron Fist are back together. I mean, that's what it's all about. <laughs> awesome. And that's Thanks. what's cool, if I could just chime in for a minute about what David's doing with Power Man and Iron Fist, is that you have this sense of history that Cage and Iron Fist have had all these years of adventures but when these guys get back together, it's kind of like, you know, we have that old friend who, when you get together, you just have that energy, you know, yeah, and you, like, you go back a little back bit. Like um, but it's also a little bit awkward at first because you haven't hung and done stuff in a while. And I think that's kind of what you're going to be greeted with with the first issue. Yeah, you know, and I mean, it's, it's, it's like Iron Fist is like, hey, let's go out and fight Dr. Doom. And Power Man's like, yo, I got to watch the kid. You know, it's, it's, I mean, that's not specific something that happens, but that's, there, there's, there's some of that dynamic there. And, and it's like, I just, I love writing about it. It's a, it reminds me of like, if you see me walk around tomorrow, I'm gonna be walking around with my best friend from fifth grade, mm -hmm. who we bonded over the Incredible Hulk. Like we're the only two kids in our school that read comic books, but we have nothing in common. We, you look at us and you'll be like, who are those two weird old men? But it's like, it's, that's what it's all about. It's all about, at, at our heart and soul, we're, we're friends, and, and that's what this is about. It's about friendship. So, yeah, it's gonna be fun, man. You got, you're like, awesome. you're gonna be blown away. So, cool. Appreciate awesome. it. Hello, what's your name? Uh, Alexis. Hi, Hi Alexis. Alexis. Uh, so, I had two questions. First part is I absolutely love Secret Love. Seeing Misty Knight and like Danny Rand and just all of that was amazing. I just wanna ask are we gonna possibly see Lucy? in the Power Man and Iron Fist? Because I know it was just a, like a one-off, but does that happen or is she I, 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 I don't kiss and tell, and so I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm definitely not gonna I talk do. about other people's love lives. You'll, you'll see some interesting stuff at some point, okay. most definitely. And then second question. Um, Robbie Reyes was one of my like absolute favorite characters, but I haven't actually seen anything announced about him yet. Are we gonna be seeing more of him? You will definitely see more of Robbie Reyes. He's one of my favorite characters, Mexican American. Myself, love seeing him in action. Uh, Felipe Smith will, will be returning to the character. We're just, oh. right now we're working around not only his schedule, but sort of our publishing schedule so that we can launch it right. We have some things to get in line before we do that book. Okay. I didn't, I'm not gonna tell you what it's called, <laughs> okay. but it's gonna be dope. Okay, yeah, thank yeah. you. Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Patty. Hi, Betty. Hi. Okay, so I'm like the biggest X-Men fan, I want to say. I've read every issue of X-Men. I've read every issue of X-Force, Uncanny X-Force, X-Factor, New Mutants, Gen X. Like, I'm impressed. All new X-Men, Uncanny X-Men, amazing. I've read everything. So I will read literally anything if the X-Men are in it, even if it's only one character. I read crap that I didn't want to. No offense. I, lo I love you already. This is great. <laughs> so, um, I was wondering if um, Kitty Pride and Star-Lord are going to be together, or if they're gonna be in a book together. I don't even like Guardians of the Galaxy. I hate sci-fi, but I love, like, <laughs> I love unnecessary romance, so. <laughs> I love unnecessary romance is, yes. is pretty great. Let's well, come on up, uh, and I'll give you a copy of our of next week's Guardians of the Galaxy number one. <laughs> yep, yep. There you go. Uh, Kitty, Kitty is a big part of Guardians of the Galaxy moving forward. Uh, I think you're gonna like. I think you're gonna like that issue. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, you're back. Yes. Uh, hi, what can we do again. for you? <laughs> so, so yeah, I just wanted to play off of someone else's question. Um, I was also a huge fan of Avenger, Avengers Arena and Avengers Undercover. And there's actually just one character I'm wondering about in particular. I've been fascinated with her story arc ever since Annihilation, Annihilation Conquest, and seeing her come into her own in uh, Undercover and everything. 
Are we ever going to see any more of Cami the Destroyer? Yes, you will. We've been talking about her. I know that I, I, I don't know exactly where yet, but we haven't forgotten about her. All right, and please keep, please bring Cam back. I will do. Hello, what's your name? David. Hi, David. Hi. Loving Secret Wars at the moment. Slight question: With all these number ones coming out, while Secret Wars is still going on and still got a good month to go. If we get the number ones of all the things that have just come out, are we going to have a whole bunch of plot holes or things that have happened, or what, what's the situation? Because Doctor Doom is still out there, but we don't know what happens to then cause, oh, wait, we've got all these different universes back now, or it never happened, or what happens? No, really? the, we wouldn't have done it this way. We would have pushed everything back. We, uh, th there's plenty of story to be told, in the conclusion of the Secret War, uh, oh, expletive deleted moments galore. And, uh, and, and it should be virtually spoiler free. The fact that you, you know, even through solicitation cycles, you see that Miles Morales is going to be in the Marvel Universe, right? Yeah. So we have to prep for things like that all the time. The three to four month gap between which this story ends and that. You know, the death of Wolverine, you can't keep a secret because there's no Wolverine book coming out, you know? So this is the same kind of thing. We made the right adjustments and we think you're going to be happy. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Quentin Choir. Everyone, hi, Quentin. Hey, guys. Um, love what you're doing with the idea for Uncanny Avengers coming up, where it's just, you know, you're, you're, something you guys talk to is, hey, there's mutants. We're, we're mixing everyone in. Uh, so quick question about character development there. A lot of people's fan favorite is Rogue. So going into Rogue, um, are we going to see her... Uh, I read Axel talking a couple weeks ago that she's going to be a little bit more of a leadership role in Uncanny Avengers, I believe. Is she going to be returning to, like, the confidence level of, you know, the 90s when we really all fell in love with her? You know, she hit a really streak there in the 2000s where she was getting hit and hard with a lot of story, a lot of negative things in her life, a lot of her powers changing, all of that. A little bit of talk, if you can, about the future of Rogue and what's happening with her in the series. Sure. Uh, Uncanny Avengers coming up is really awesome. Jerry Duggan, Ryan Stegman doing incredible, incredible work on there. Uh, they've got a, a pretty big focus on her. You'll see a little bit of it. I mean, nothing's ever been easy for Rogue, and nothing will ever be easy for her, that's for sure. But if there's one thing that Jerry Duggan does well, it, it writes characters who are strong uh, and who persevere through craziness. I mean, I don't know. If, is anyone reading Deadpool out there? Yeah. Right? I mean, he, like, it's a hilarious book, but it, it is also, like, an existentially horrifying book. Like, he's put Deadpool through the biggest ringer I've ever read, and I've read a lot of Deadpool comics in my time. Uh, he's going to do the same thing to Rogue, but I think you're going to see uh, an incredible iteration of Rogue and see her personality. I can't speak too much more to it than that, but, uh, but they've got big plans for her, but that's for sure. Thanks, man. Absolutely. I love that T-shirt. I want a picture before you go. Hi, um, I'm a really big fan of Iron Fist and Power Man, but for me, when I think of like the Marvel duo and like my favorite Marvel duo, it's Cloak and Dagger. Yep. Any plans for those characters? Because I really, really would love a book for them. Yep, uh, uh, keep your eyes peeled. We got some big Cloak and Dagger stuff coming. I'm working on a book where, they, where uh, the first pages with them on it have, have shown up and I've got a cover with them on it. Uh, I'm not going to say where just yet, but keep your eyes peeled. It's coming up in, I think, February, January, February, something like that. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, we got, we're in our last minutes. We're going to go quickly. Hi, so my name is Mike. Hi, Mike. Uh, my quick question is, I love X-23. I'm glad that she's becoming big in the Marvel Universe, but I was also a huge fan of her romance with Hellion. Is there any chance of that coming back? Uh, Dennis says no. <laughs> She more recently had a romance with nope. Angel. You might see a little more of that. Next up, really quick, lightning round. Uh, hi, I'm Christian. Uh, hi, Christian. Uh, one, uh, will, uh, in the near future, will there ever be a She-Hulk solo series again? A Shield? A She-Hulk. Oh, She-Hulk. Uh, we love that book, too. Keep, keep reading. Just keep, okay. keep your eyes and ears peeled. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and Iron Fist, last question. Yeah, hi, I'm Jimmy. Uh, I was just wondering, I'm a huge X-Men fan, you have some great X-Men books coming up, and with Uncanny Avengers, New Avengers, great mutant-led titles, what about uh, smaller titles like X-Factor, X-Force, characters like Havoc, like smaller? Great question. 
again, we, all you've seen is the tip of the iceberg for our X-Men plans. I'm not spoiling it here. I, I don't want to get in trouble if I announce things before it's time. So just keep reading. Thank you.